Okay. So this is our last lesson on Riemann sums before we move on. And what we're doing here is we're given now a function, but the steps are exactly the same. So what I suggest you do here is build your own table to solve these. Although it's not always necessary. Like we're going to start with a pretty easy one. Um, probably not necessary to build a table. You could probably work through this one without it. But there's one coming up that's a little bit more challenging where we will see like the value of having a table. Um, the first step in this one, the kind of the challenge that we're adding here, is figuring out what your subintervals are. So we have six subintervals of equal length, and our, our bounds are from zero to three. Okay. Um, so it's still the same steps, really. So to find the subinterval length, you're taking essentially the bounds, the difference between the bounds divided by the number of subintervals, right? Um, in this case, they are going to be 0.5 units. So one thing I might do is I might just kind of sketch a graph, right? And we know we're going to go out to three. Well, actually, the easiest way to do it is we'll do six subintervals. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six. We know the biggest one is three. We're starting at zero. And we kind of know what a parabola looks like. So it's going to be just a piece of a parabola. But it's going to go up and get bigger, right? So this is kind of just half of the parabola. And then these subintervals, well, 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.3, right? So we can draw them out. And then what kind of Riemann sum we want? We want a left Riemann sum. So we want our rectangles to have their left edge on the graph. I don't think you need to draw the whole thing. But if you do struggle with these, that's a helpful move. So now each of these points, let me write this out. So each of these points is going to be f of, it's going to be f of the left hand x times 0 0.5, because that is the length of our sub variable each time. Okay. So my first one is f of 0, so that would be kind of this non-existent triangle because there's no height there, because 0 squared is 0. We're talking about a parabola here. Then my second one would be the second rectangle there, and so on and so forth. Notice like 0.5 is the left-hand part of that subinterval. That's what shows up in the function here. Okay. So remember, so knowing f of x is equal to x squared, I then just work my way through this, right? So this is going to be, I'll give you an intermediate step, this is going to be point, or sorry, this can be 0 squared times 0 0.5, this is going to be 0 0.5 squared times 0 0.5, this is going to be 1 squared times 0 0.5, and so on and so on, right? So I will give you the next step. So here we've already squared all of those values. And then you're just going to simplify those and solve. Okay, so what I get here is 6.875. Okay, so I would draw it first. The useful thing about drawing it is figuring out your subintervals. And again, that's the step we've added since the last one is like in the last one, your subintervals and all the values were given to you, here we have to find them. Okay, so drawing it, at least sketching it, is going to help you keep that straight. We'll do one more, so make sure you capture this example in your notes before you move on. All right, so this is one of the, I don't want to say it's hard, but it's more involved compared to the last one. So we have 
f is a natural log function this time. And we want four subintervals of equal length. And we want a midpoint Riemann sum. So you're going to have to read these to figure out which type of sum we're finding here. We want a midpoint Riemann sum. So here, remember our bounds, 3 minus 1 over 4. That's going to give us 2 over 4 is 0. 0.5 is our subinterval length. Point five is a subinterval length, and then I'm going to sketch a graph. So this time we're going from one to three, so we're not going to start at the y-axis. And what a natural log function looks like is the natural log of one is zero, so it starts at zero, and then kind of goes up, increasing at a decreasing rate. So here's our natural log function. And if you didn't know what that looked like, you could just graph it in your calculator real quick to figure out how to sketch. And we're going to go from 1. Let's see. Well, we need four subintervals, right? So 1, 2, 3, and 4. But we want midpoint subintervals, right? So a midpoint subinterval, hardest one to draw has the middle of each rectangle on the function. Okay. So more or less like that, right? So this is why this one is the most challenging, right? Because we have to not only figure out the, the bounds and the subintervals, we have to figure out the midpoint of each. I guess I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make this a little bit bigger so I have more space to write. So if our integral is from 0 to 3, well, this is going to be, or sorry, our integral is from 1 to 3, That's what it, that doesn't make sense. So from 1 to 3, middle is going to be 2, and then we have 1.5, 0.5. Okay, but we want to figure out these midpoints, right? Well, so this midpoint is going to be 1.25, this midpoint is going to be 1.75, this midpoint is going to be 2.25, this midpoint is going to be 2.75. Okay, so those are the x's we're going to plug into our function to find the height, right? So our goal here is to find the height of these rectangles. Because remember, our whole goal is to find the area of these rectangles to approximate the area under the curve. Okay, so let's see what my solution would look like. Okay, so what I've done here is I've plugged in each of those middle points into the function. Okay, and then my subintervals are always of 0.5 length, right? We calculated that, but you can also see that from the drawings. Okay, so these numbers all come from, so this is, for example, 6ln of... 1.25. So you type that in on your calculator for each individual one. In fact, you could type in the whole thing all the way across. So you could do 6ln 1.25 times 0.5, 6 times the natural log of 1.75 times 0.5, and so on. You could type it in all in one go like that. Um, when you simplify this, you get 7.816 is our estimate of this particular Riemann sum. Okay. So this was the midpoint Riemann sum. That's the most annoying one you can get. Um, you also can get trapezoidal Riemann sums and both left and right Riemann sums like we saw in the first example. So you will have to use your notes from this lesson as well as the previous lesson to solve these. Um, I know that these are pretty involved so I only gave you a few of them. Make sure you come back and reference this video if you're stuck.